Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed evening update on the weather system offshore from New South Wales. The powerful east coast low that's been raging for the last couple of days is not winding down just yet with more rainfall expected across the Illawarra and south coast forecast districts throughout the course of tonight. So the weather is expected to be an ongoing threat into tomorrow morning. All of the details on the future of this system plus more coming up in this afternoon's weather update. If you do end up enjoying it then please do consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things here with a look at the satellite imagery with the radar imagery overlapping. So this is a complex low pressure system. In fact, there's three moving parts to this system right now, all circling around a much broader lower pressure system in the mid levels in the atmosphere. So we've of course got the defined low pressure center that was once this storm's core that's moved well offshore now from Newcastle and Tyree. This was very defined this morning and it kicked up quite a stir in some of the Facebook groups uh, in terms of how strong this system looked on the radar and the satellite imagery. In fact, if we zoom right in here to what it was early this morning at about seven or eight o'clock in the morning, it looked really impressive on not only the satellite imagery, which you can see right now, but also the radar imagery. I mean, it looked like a tropical cyclone, a really defined swirl, that's for sure. Thank goodness it was about 20 kilometers further offshore than what we were initially expecting, because I mean, you can see the swirls in the radar imagery here. That's what we call mesovortices. They can have water spouts. They can have all sorts of really nasty, severe weather embedded in them. And this is the uh, kind of part of the storm that we were very worried about. This is where those 140, 150 kilometer an hour wind gusts are uh, housed in. So it's very good news that they kept well off offshore. But boy, oh boy, what a sight and what a scare we had for parts of the Hunter coast and also parts of the mid-north coast as well with this system being so close to the coast. Now, throughout the course of today, as you can see on the satellite imagery, we've had two separate low pressure centers develop into the southern side of the system here around that broader mid-level low pressure center. You can see the first one here now beginning to move closer towards the New South Wales south coast. In fact, it looks like it's on a collision course right now for about Bega or Malakuta at this point over in Victoria. And then a second one over here. Now, these are other mesovortices or meso low pressure systems associated with this weather system here moving into, uh, the, well, into the sites of the New South Wales coastline. This is where more severe weather is uh, hosted and that's why we're expecting that resurgence in rainfall throughout this afternoon and this evening. So whilst it now feels like this system is now pulling away from New South Wales and the worst conditions are now behind us, though before there is a little bit of rainfall still coming in behind it, plenty more moisture still to collide with the New South Wales coastline, especially further south into the state, uh, south of about Wollongong. We're expecting some heavy rainfall to move through later this afternoon and into this evening. And you can already start to see it now moving through onto the radar imagery at this point in time. Some heavier falls now moving into the Naruma area, uh, moving up to towards Oladola, which had 250 millimetres in the previous 24 hour period and a further 50 or 60 millimetres already so far today. So it really has poured and poured around Oladola throughout the course of today. And you can see the convection does actually intensify a little bit. I can show that a little bit better on this imagery here, which is the infrared. Uh, it shows you know, on a, a kind of conventional color scheme how intense the clouds are and how intense the thunderstorms are. We're talking about those blue or aqua areas. The clouds aren't too intense. It's just general rainfall. But when we're talking about some orange and even into the red, which you can see through here, that's intense convection barreling around this low pressure system. And that's the stuff that we're concerned about. Moving into New South Wales at this point in time, that's where we're expecting some of the worst conditions to be housed. So. Still, I would say for today, uh, weather-wise, the worst weather is still yet to come, especially through this afternoon and this evening, and you can see that quite clearly on the European forecast modelling here. More rainfall still expected to barrel in later on this afternoon and into this evening into the New South Wales southeast coast. The East Mobif has actually backed down their rainfall forecast considerably. Other forecast models, especially those convective forecast models, the access convective here calling for a resurgence in heavy rainfall. And considering that this low pressure center, or this second one that we're talking about, uh, is expected to come within about three or 400 kilometers of the New South Wales coastline, I have no reason to believe why we won't see a resurgence in rainfall later on tonight. But it will be exclusively for those coastal regions between kind of Naruma up towards Mullingong. So Oladola, uh, Jervis Bay, Nara, Bore, all those sort of areas, expecting a bit of a resurgence in heavy rainfall at this point in time, but we're not expecting this rainfall to penetrate too far inland, no more than about 20 or 30 kilometers, depending on how thick the mountains are in the areas around the coastline. And then further south of Naruma, the chance of heavy rainfall really does fall off. We're not expecting heavy falls further south of Naruma at this point in time. And the rainfall looks like it's going to clear pretty quickly through the early hours of tomorrow morning as a main low pressure system moves further away from the coastline. And the rainfall is actually pretty much expected to be non-existent across parts of the New South Wales coastline, north of Wollongong through tomorrow morning and into tomorrow afternoon. It looks like it might be a dry day for some, which they do desperately need at this point in time. 
Interesting stuff, that's for sure. Rainfall accumulations aren't expected to be anything too crazy over the next 24 hours. We are looking at rainfall accumulations kind of resurging again tonight as we have just been talking about, but we are only looking at maybe about 50 to 80 millimetres or so at the absolute tippy toppy end. We're probably looking at about 100 millimetres around Oladola and Jervis Bay. That would be the heaviest rainfall that we could reasonably see from this weather event uh, on top of what has already fallen. But considering the fact that we have had such heavy rainfall accumulations, I mean, uh, north of Oladola, we had rainfall accumulations in the previous 24 hour period of 248 millimetres on top of about 120 millimetres that fell in the previous 24 hour period to that. And then another 80 millimetres coming through tonight. You do the quick math on that, you're looking at 400 millimetres from this weather event in its entirety. So that's some pretty serious rainfall. And this rainfall might just be the icing on the cake to result in minor or moderate riverine flooding through some of the major rivers into this part of New South Wales. So it's still definitely a time to remain vigilant and remain uh, very much weather aware and uh, in the know of what's going on around New South Wales at this point in time, especially uh, with a look at how this system has been progressing throughout the course of today. By no means is it that the monster of the storm that it previously was, especially last night in terms of rainfall and also, also in terms of wind speeds, it's not that, uh, as strong as what it previously was, but it still is definitely packing a punch and later on tonight we will see that resurgence in rainfall and again, falls could be between 50 to 80 millimetres at a maximum south of Jervis Bay through Oladola and then down towards Naruma. The heaviest falls will be in that pocket, but we're not writing off falls between 20 to 40 millimetres further north up towards Sydney and then south of uh, Naruma down through Malakuta and then into parts of the Gippsland region through Victoria. We could be seeing some moderate falls through there, coupled with some cold temperatures. We could be seeing some heavy snowfall accumulations into some of the higher peaks as well. There is quite a lot of moisture being dragged up through the Bass Strait as well into the, into the Melbourne area, and it is a bit of a wet and miserable day for them. That just goes to show how big this low pressure system is. I mean, I'm zooming out here and you can see all of Australia in this picture right now. We have that low pressure system located offshore from New South Wales with its massive inflow feature extending from New Caledonia down through New Zealand and then across towards Tasmania right through the Tasman Sea and then back up again through Victoria, New South Wales and even into the southeastern corners of Queensland. This is huge and placed over Australia to cover about 60 or 70% of the nation, a nation that is 7 million square kilometres. This is an absolutely monstrous low pressure system uh, and it really does show on the satellite imagery how large its area of influence is. So it just gives you an idea that even though the slow pressure system might be offshore from New South Wales, it's having impacts on the weather as far out as Western Victoria. So that's why it's very cold down there, but I do digress on that. Like I said, wind speeds have now begun to drop down. You can see winds averaging 40 to 50 kilometers an hour on the coastline, pushing 60 in some places, still fly stand while looking at 90 kilometer an hour wind gusts. So it is still quite blustery here and there. And then down towards Cape Green, we've got winds out of the southwest at 67 kilometers an hour, gusts there probably approaching 100 k's an hour in place at, or at times. So winds are certainly still by no stretch of the imagination weak uh, and uh, a minimal threat. We've still got that damaging wind threat and that's expected to continue throughout the remainder of today. And again, with the return of the rainfall resurge later on, tonight as well but it is a, a kind of a shell of what this storm formerly was it, it definitely is on its way out at this point in time it's made the most of all of the energy available into the Tasman Sea really has sapped it that's for sure and it was a really powerful east coast low now I just call this a pretty stock standard east coast low at this point in time with a little bit more punch still to give to the Australian region especially through or well, especially through the New South Wales east coast uh, below Sydney we're expecting a, a little bit more punch to come through throughout the course of tonight but like I said, severe weather threat now starting to really drop off, which is some good news indeed. But the coast is not clear yet, so make sure you are staying away from the ocean, staying away from the beach, staying safe as well, staying inside through uh, during a weather event like this, and avoid all non-essential travel because this is still a dangerous weather system and it, it can pack a punch, a surprising punch as well. I know New South Wales is no stranger, especially at this time of the year, to for East Coast lows, but a system like this, when we're talking about one of the strongest storms in any given decade, uh, it definitely can catch a few people off guard, and this system definitely has has caught a few people off guard already, especially closer to the coastline. So make sure you are playing it safe, playing it cool, calm and collected. And if you're inside and out of the elements from this system, you have nothing to worry about at all, especially from this point onwards. That is going to do it for this afternoon. This is the end of Twice Daily Forecast Updates. Tomorrow we to re just return to the uh, regular daily program and that's going to continue for the foreseeable future. Uh, but that is going to be all for me today. And I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.